Welcome back to another video guys. We're actually out here shooting in the rain today, uh, getting another video out to you guys this week. Um, my name is Madison Raber. I'm a timber consultant. Um, I have cut, skid, consulted on, hauled over 20 million board feet of timber. And today we're gonna be looking at the best way to sell your timber to ultimately make the most profit on your trees. So today we're gonna to be looking at three different uh, types of buyers and the best way to sell your timber in your specific region. So I'm located out of Ohio here and it's very applicable to Ohio, Pennsylvania, parts of Kentucky, Indiana, West Virginia, uh, Michigan. Some of the other regions you know, may, not, may or may not apply. Uh, we can discuss some of those things later on in the video. But in this specific area, you, know, you typically have three different types of buyers. You have the mills, you have just the loggers directly, and then you have a consulting forester that markets the timber for you. And we'll, we'll look at that more in depth as well. So the first type and most common is going to be uh, your mills. And so a lot of these mills, you know, are pretty large operations. Uh, these are the guys that are generally speaking going to pay you top dollar for your timber. In our area here, you know, it's pretty common that they will buy an entire woodlot, not necessarily specific on uh, species. I know in some other areas, mills will only specialize in say white oak. And so the only time they buy standing timber is going to be if the woods is heavy to white oak. So those are kind of a niche, you know, circumstance, but um, here in Ohio, that's not really the case. They'll buy pretty well anything. Um, and then, you know, they can sell off to other mills if they need to. Another type of buyer is going to be just your loggers. Now, so those mills that I previously mentioned, uh, they have subcontract loggers that do the work for them. So when they go out and get a job under contract, then they hire out subcontract loggers to go out and do that harvesting. There's also another type of logger that does the buying themselves. Now this type, they often will try to do a job based off a percentage. And so what that looks like is, hey, you know, I'm coming out looking at your timber. I think you've got, you know, $50,000 worth of timber here total and they'll generally wanna split that 50-50 or 60-40, depending on the type of quality of trees you have. And so then they will go out, you know, cut the trees down, log them out, and, and then get uh, buyers to come in and bid on those trees that are laid out. And then whatever that brings, say it brings $50,000, you know, you get $25,000 and the logger gets $25,000 and out of that 25,000 is going to cover their cost, their labor, their overhead and that's a pretty straightforward. On that, you typically won't see the money until after the project is completed. That way, you know, a lot of these operations are a little bit smaller. They don't have the capital to be able to purchase everything up front, and that's why they're doing it based off a percentage. The third way is going to be through a consulting forester. You know, depending on the area, you may or may not be able to do this. In some areas, you know, for example, out in Illinois, it's not nearly as common to work through a consulting forester. Um, but here in Ohio, you know, there's quite a bit of uh, foresters like myself, which is what I do. And we are essentially real estate agents for timber. Not only are we doing that, but we also have a completely unbiased look at your timber. We're trying to achieve your goals as a landowner. And, and we're going in and marking those trees on your behalf. And then we get buyers to come in and bid on those trees to ultimately you know, get you top dollar. So let's dive into some of these different things and why or, may, why, or why not you may or may not wanna uh, you know, choose a specific buyer in your area. So from my experience, in most cases, going directly to the mill is going to you know, get you top dollar for your timber. And I, you know, I have other videos going through you know, what they're looking for, how much they need to make it worth their time and all that you can check out my other videos. Um, I'll try and list those down in the description below. Like I said, a mill, generally speaking, is going to be more so the end consumer of the, the raw material and are gonna be able to pay a little bit better for those logs. But like I mentioned previously, that's gonna be pretty region specific. So, you know, down in Kentucky, for example, you might have mills that specialize in white oak. You know, there's not a great market then for the red oak, in which case they, they you know, won't be able to pay as much. So then in that scenario, you're better off working through a logger. You know, he knows the buyers in your area and, and be able to do it that way. But here in Ohio, 
you know, generally speaking, through the mills is going to be your best bet. Always, you know, there's going to be exceptions for the rule, but um, loggers are going to be able to do smaller projects, you know, so a mill is going to want pretty high volume. Um, loggers are going to be willing to deal with a little bit more on, you know, with you and the landowner, some of the, some of the specific requests you might have. They're going to be able to do smaller jobs, a little bit more niche things. And so there is a place 100% for the loggers. Like I said, a lot of these guys will want to do percentage splits. Not all of them, but a lot of them. You know, I've seen this work out pretty well. And, and in some areas, you know, if, if, if your timber needs cut or you're looking at it specifically from a, a habitat improvement standpoint, you may just simply have to work through a logger if that's what's available in your area. And then third, like we said, is the um, consulting forester. And the reason I believe this is the best way to sell your timber, especially if you have larger volume, these guys go out and they're working on your behalf to get you top dollar. We are incentivized to get you top dollar. That way we ultimately get paid more as well. So a lot of these guys will operate based off a of percentage, any, you know, ranging from six to 12% is pretty standard. You know, they'll come out, mark the timber according to your goals, and then we get buyers to come in and bid on those trees. What I've seen a lot is, you know, when you have somebody that is a professional in the industry and they, and they know the little tricks, what these mills are looking for, there's so many variables that go into a timber sale. And so when you have a professional working on your behalf, I have seen time and time again, the jobs just end up bringing more money. So... Um, an example of this was back when I was buying timber for myself and for another company as well, I would put bids in on forester jobs and it was just, it blew me away how much more these jobs would bring than, you know, if we were going directly to a customer, you know, just, they generally just brought more money and it was even more than, you know, more than covered what the cost of the, the forester was charging. And then you also had somebody there to work with you throughout the process and make sure the job is done correctly. And so that's ultimately why I began to consult um, for the last two years I've done this. My goal is to get you as a landowner top dollar for your timber and be able to help you walk through the process, teach you along the way about this process. Hopefully down the road, if you've you know done the sale a few times, you've, you've sold a couple pieces of timber, you very well may not need a consulting forester. This is something you might be able to do yourself. Another kind of region specific, I was working with a guy out in Illinois and out there, you know, it's a little bit different. It's primarily going to be loggers where you're doing percentage splits. Uh, the main thing in all of this, and I would say this is kind of an all encompassing, a few key things to take away before you do a timber sale, regardless of who you sell through. And that is going to be to get your timber marked, make sure all the trees that are getting cut are marked, that are clear between you and the buyer, which trees are being taken. That way, when you get multiple guys in to bid, it is pretty clear which is the high bidder. When you don't have that clarity, you might have multiple offers, but they're gonna be on different trees. Everybody wants to do things a little bit differently. And it's going to be tough to be able to compare apples to apples on what your bids are. So last but not least, ultimately you are in control. When you set the parameters of the sale, you're just ultimately gonna get more money for um, your timber in that scenario. It's easy to, you know, feel like, well, I don't know much about timber and, you know, you don't take the time to educate yourself on the timber. It's easy to get taken advantage of in those scenarios. And that's where you hear a lot of those horror stories. And sadly, a lot of times it's even, you know, family members or people you know that can come out and, you know, potentially, you know, take advantage of you just because you're not aware of the industry and how the industry works. So I've got a whole bunch of videos, you know, going through different, different ways of selling much more in depth than this video. Uh, but I wanted to take the time to just kind of go over the best ways to sell your timber and, you know, the way to maximize profit on your end when you actually do a timber sale. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. We try and upload every other week on a Thursday. I will see you next time.